another, I prefer to have another monitor for my mixing console. That's just my preference, but there's left, right, and lower zone. So you will be looking that I move very quickly on my project and it's because we made it easy so that everything is in the, this main project window, but you can take it out if you want. So another thing that I must say before I dive in is that you sometimes will see that I'm very quick, like opening windows like this, like, okay, I just opened the video window. It's because I have my key commands and you can customize your key commands. So you will see that I kind of fly sometimes and you, you I don't go through menus. And this is one of the things that I really love about this software. You can customize your key commands. So you don't have to force yourself to learn the key commands. You can just make them yourself. Now, if you're coming from an DAW, we also have those key commands inside, so you can use them, but you can also modify them. And I myself modify them and it's just, just up to you. So just in case you see Windows popping up and down, that's the reason why I use a lot of key commands. And just for example, now I'm using key commands for the Zoom. So I don't have to be scrolling right here, you know, like this. <laughs> okay, so this is my project window and these are ADR projects. I have um, a window with my video, I have some dialogue and I have to re-record this uh, short film, which is actually in German. I have to record it, say in English or in Spanish or in any language, right? So you have to re-record the whole thing. Normally, in most DAWs, you, if you open the marker window, let's say this is the markers window, and this is the core of the ADR. If you open the marker window, you can add a marker wherever. You can say function, insert a marker. This is as in most DAWs, you can do this. And then you put a description and it's there like chorus, for example, chorus one, whatever it is. But we have a function that is called cycle marker. So the main difference is that the cycle marker will have a star point and also an end point. And so Nuendo knows where to stop a recording. So the cycle marker is basically a marker that has an end. So you can have, for example, the chorus one ends on bar 32. And then you start with whatever section that comes. So you can have, for example, it's as easy as if you want to select a part over here and you say insert cycle marker, you can put description, let's say title, it doesn't matter. Okay, and now I have a start and an end point. And it's here, I just made it. And I just made it that it, its name, its title. You can put whatever name you want, of course. So having explained this, you can move this around and it will move with the video. So if you have a dialogue that you want to replace, let's say this guy, um, this sleepy guy, and you have to record a John or something, then Nuendo can automatically start and end the recording according to that cycle marker. So I have cycle markers for three languages over here. So I have English, for example, and you can see that in the video, now we have the dialogue. And if I go to my markers, and if I go to German, for example, now I have the dialogue changing accordingly so I can navigate super easily in my project once you have arranged your markers. So you can see them here. Now you might think, okay, this, this might take some time. You can actually even do this outside Nuendo the night before in, uh, and have that imported as a, a text file, that's one option, or you can do it in Nuendo just as I did it. So you, there is some time, of course, to make the markers. Yes, it's not automatic. We're working on that, that part, but so far it's not the markers, you have to make them. You have to know where the dialogue is being placed. Once you do that, you enter the dialogue here and then it will appear uh, whatever you want. If you want, you, you can take it out. There's some, some people that are, are recording and they don't, just don't want to see any letters over there. So you can just go to the preference and just take it out if you want. There's a lot of preference for this. But the main idea, sorry about the, that image. The main idea is that you can go 
and navigate and start recording automatically. What do I mean by start recording automatically? There is this thing that is called target track, right? And, and you see some numbers. So there's the marker, there's the dialogue, and there's some target track. So what this means is that Nuendo, once everything is set up, will know where to start recording. So in this case, track number two is Dave, right? So Dave is saying, oh, oh, so you want to, re you want to record that, for example. Let's say that you have another guy who's called Jimmy, and that's track number three, and so forth and so on. So for example, Roy is track number four. And of course, you have to put this accordingly. So let's say I want to record Dave. Normally, you have to go to over here, select the track, record a label, record, put, just do everything manually. But Nuendo will do it automatically. So even if it's not record enabled, I'm just going to select this and start recording. And you see now it started recording. And it starts recording that right there. And it will stop it right with the marker. Duck. That's it. And then you can do that with all the dialogue lines. And of course, you can re-record it multiple times and there will be lanes and then you can select the best takes, of course. So let's say then Roy comes and he wants to record or even I must say, we have this solution in Nuendo that you can do it remotely. So even there's, if there's a talent there's, uh, that it's not present because in these times, sometimes you cannot be present on the studio. It can be done through the internet in high quality through VST Connect, which is one, part of, one of the features of, of Nuendo that I will not go into detail, but I want to let you know that you can also have ADR through the internet with Nuendo, which is very good in these times. So that's basically the ADR now. This is the basic uh, idea behind it. Once you have your markers and then you can just change the marker here if you want to go to English, just change it. If you want to go to Spanish, you just go to Spanish. And this is very unique. There are, if you want to have this in other DAW, you, you have to pay a lot of money, I will say. <laughs> and it's all included in Nuendo. And it has been there, six, Nuendo 6.5. So it's been there in developing for years. So it's very efficient and we will keep developing it like we did. Like now we can record through the internet in high quality, even with the talent being far away from the studio. With video also. There's some information about that in the internet if you want to check it out. So that's ADR. Now, I want to show you something that's very useful. That's very also kind of unique. And that's the loudness track. So there's something called the loudness track. And what that means is that normally when you're working on post-production, you have to have a certain loudness to match. So we do have that in the control room. And let me just, um, so there, there will be some music there. And you can see that in my loudness track, I went too far and Nuendo gave me a very red flag saying, you went too far. You have to recheck this. So the loudness track, you don't have to play the whole project. You can do a quick loudness analysis and it will give you a loudness analysis of the whole thing and it will let you know where you went too high. So in this part of the project, everything is okay, for example. But then, then the integrated loudness went too far. Okay, so just want to show you that we also have that that's very unique inside Nuendo and it's very useful for post-production, mostly if you're working with other continents. So if you have to deliver, for example, for Japan, there's one loudness standard and the US, there's another loudness standard. So we have, we can change all this in Nuendo and then you can have it inside and then you can comply to the loudness standard. It's also into the, if you're in a very hurry, let's say you can also have it so that the, even the mixes, if you will have to, to deliver a thousand files in a very rush and you cannot check them all, we have a tool called normalize to the integrated loudness. And then you make sure that all the files will match the loudness that you want to aim for. Okay. That was automatic dialogue replacement. And I wanted to also mention because of the Netflix loudness metering that we have 
um, that um, it's inside supervision, which is a, a whole suite of metering. There's meterings for ambisonics, there's meterings for loudness, there's metering for stereo surround. So there's a plenty of meters that comes with Nuendo also. And we're, we have one meter that's specifically designed for Netflix. So the Netflix loudness meters. Hence, we are part of the Post Technology Alliance of Netflix. And uh, the important thing about this, if you ever, I hope you ever have to deliver something to Netflix soon, that will be great. Then the important part thing, the, the important part here is that there's a dialogue, um, a gated dialogue loudness. So basically it takes the dialogue into consideration. It has an algorithm that will analyze that if there's dialogue or not. And this is because Netflix is very dialogue oriented. So the dialogue is very important in Netflix. It's mostly documentaries and movies. It's not that there's concerts, of course. So because Netflix is very dialogue oriented, then we have integrated this measurement that they actually require. So if you are working for Netflix, then this is great to have inside Nuendo. And you can also have it as an export function. If you put integrated loudness, then you can have dialogue gate measurements. So it's, it's also integrated into a render process, if you want to, of course. Okay, just in case, if you're working with Netflix, I really hope so. Let's go with reconform. Reconform, it's, it's a, such a great tool. It saves so much time, but if you're not working in that field, then I'm gonna explain it to you. Let's say you're working on a soundtrack for a film, TV or episode trailer, whatever you're working, you're working with audio and you finish the audio. And now there's the editor comes with a new version of the video at 3 a.m. in the morning and you have to deliver at seven, let's say. So you have to adapt the whole project for this new video that have like an extra take or an extra edit and you have to do it normally, manually. This, apart from taking a while, also leads to human mistakes, mostly if you're in a hurry. So we have a tool that will change the whole project according to that new file that you receive from the video editor. So it will basically rearrange the project to a video file. Now you think, how is this possible? <laughs> I also thought so too. Okay, so, um, sorry, reconforming, I, I skipped the slide too, it's too fast. Reconforming, you can think about it, as I said before, automatic re-editing of the whole audio project according to the video changes. When we are working as an audio guy for movies or films, the video is the important part and we have to adapt to it a lot of times. So what you need, of course, is a new video, of course. And then there's one thing called the EDL and that's edit decision list. That is basically all the time codes where the video got caught and that it's not difficult to export. Anyone, sometimes I've seen some people having a, like a struggle with this, like nobody has ever given me an ADL. Any of the video editor, the serious video editor suites, when you export the video, you have also the ability to export the EDL. It's just a simple step. It's basically saying to the software, export all the time codes where the scenes were cutted. And it looks like this. And that's why it's so nice to have it in Wendo because you don't want to be looking at those numbers. You don't, you don't want to be messing around with all those time codes. And this is actually how this comes from the times where all the reels and all where people were filming with reels. So they will, uh, make notes of all the time codes where all the, the scenes got inserted. So this is the window in Nuendo and it looks appalling because it has all the time codes for all the, from two videos, but you don't have to worry about this because Nuendo will do it automatically for you. I'm just explaining to you what this is, what is all these numbers. So what these numbers are, there's one thing here that says old and that's the old video. And these were all the video cuts for that video, the EDL. 
And then you receive the new video. So that's the new. And then there's the EDL, so all the cuts for the scenes. So Nuendo will compare the old with the new and will create what they call a change EDL, which is basically a comparison of all the time codes. And it will tell you where there is a difference, where, where there's a change. So for example, and it will also show you visually. So I have here two bars. One says source, that's the old video. And then destination, that will be the new, how the project will behave. So I, I see, for example, over here, this new scene, something got moved. This little green square got moved a little bit. So something got caught. And there's a, a new scene over here, there's a space. So you can kind of visually see. And I'll go to a project where I can show how easy this is after I explained, <laughs> after all this explanation, I'll show you how easy it is. So, uh, sometimes Zoom blocks my menus. <laughs> okay, don't block my menus, Zoom, thank you. Reconform. Okay, so there's a new project here and um, it's actually, there's a movie here. We have done the recordings. We are done with the dialogue. We're done with the music. We're ready to go, we as audio guys, but then there's a new video coming. So most of the post-production and important features of Nuendo are on the project. So if you um, now I was searching for reconforming, then I go to project and you can see that most of the hardcore, very good things that are unique are here. Like all the things that head tracking, all the Atmos, all this stuff. So I'm gonna open the reconform window. Oh, it was open on the background. <laughs> Normally I have uh, several monitors, um, two monitors to be exact. And, I don't have to deal with this, but today we are in a laptop. Okay, so this is the old video and the new video. Right now, nothing has changed. I, I have a, a little button here that says generate. If I click generate, then the comparison starts. Generate, that's it. Now, Nuendo tells me what the changes, where the changes are and what happened here visually. So I see there's like four changes. Now the project has not changed yet, right? So, but I can see here that visually I can see there's some changes and I have the new and the old video. So I can even review some parts. And if everything looks okay, normally if, if everything looks okay, it will be green like this. If there's a problem, when they will tell you with a red light. So everything looks green, everything looks okay. So then I have a button here that says start reconform. And what this will do is that it will apply this EDL with just gener generate, we just generate that, and we'll move the whole project according to all these time codes. And it will be very fast. And you will see the project moving when I'm pressing here. So I'm gonna go three, two, one, let's go. That was it. Boom. Now I have a project and I, I can see this is my old video and this is my new video. I can see that there's a new scene here that was not there before. So my old video did not contain that, for example. So that you can see that there, the old video is still there so you can see what happens. And um, up to this point, I had dialogue. And now when I come to the end, and the new part comes, there's a new scene that just got inserted and there's nothing here. So you're ready to record your dialogue and your music. Normally this will take so long. If you have to do this manually and just move everything, it's, so it's super automatic and great if you're working with video. Most people don't even know this exists. This is a great, great tool and I recommend it. Um, and even if you, are enthusiastic about it, I can send you the project if you want to. So that was reconform, that re-editing of the whole project only because a new video appeared. Okay. Third, <laughs> field recorder audio import. So let's say you're working 
um, on, on a TV series or a film. And normally there's more than one microphone inside that movie set. It could be like a lavalier, like the one I'm having here. It could be like a, like a boom mic or a shotgun mic, they call it sometimes, which is like a, a big one that is, you can point and you can have like a, so you can have several microphones. And let's say somebody is recording all this. It's not a studio situation. So it has to be a portable device. And that is why it's called the field recorder. So it's basically a portable studio, right? It has preamps, it has audio inputs, and you can record with it outside the studio. And then all these files you give, all these files, actually not all these files, then come the video editor and just uses a reference file, just one little reference of the whole thing because the audio editor, normally you will just, when he starts editing, he just needs a reference track. He doesn't need the whole session of Nuendo, of course. He has his own whole session of video to edit. So you give a reference track. Now, once the whole video post-production is done, then as an audio engineer, it's your job to make the best audio possible. So then you have to take the, the real original audio and replace the audio that the, the editor had in the video and just make the best audio you need, you can do. So you take all those files from the original recording and you have to basically listen to them, see what the microphones were. I mean, there's a lot of work involved if it's not automatic, but we do have a solution that's automatic for this. And it's called field recorded audio import. And it's basically search for the field recorded files that match a selected event in the project. And I will do that just in a minute. As most post-production windows, there's time code. It looks complex because it's a, it's a complex tool, but it's very easily manipulated. That's a good part. So let's see how easily manipulated it is. Let's open a project for this. Uh, field recorded audio input. Okay, activate the project. And now I have a new project here where there's uh, like uh, some kind of like a, uh, Italian mafia guys and they're not very happy and they're looking for money. So there's one guy who's in trouble and I'm gonna crank up the volume. I'm gonna to go to my control room here and I'm gonna crank up the volume so that you can hear that the audio is not the best one. It has some artifacts in it. Where's my dad? So there's some noise and you have to replace it. And if you have to do it automatically, it can be tedious, let's call it like that. So let's say I want to replace this little file which I just played, right? So the guy is saying, it's actually saying in German, where's my money? And that's what, so that's why he's not so happy. And the other guy is very scared, of course. So as most post-production things, I go project and then field recorded audio input. And I'm gonna open that, okay. I'm gonna close the video for now. And now this is how it looks like, completely empty. So you have to tell Nuendo what to do for sure. So let's just um, say, select the file that I want to replace. Now, as I said before, I normally have multiple um, monitors. So it's not so clumsy. Nuendo can have resolutions that are for full HD. So now it looks like this window takes a lot of space and it's because of the resolution of this monitor in particular. So I'm gonna select the file that I want to replace and then I will click an update. And what this means is that that is the file that you want to replace. So I'll click update and there it is. There's a name there that is not very friendly. So you don't have too much reference of what, <laughs> what to search for. And, and then, of course, you have your folder where all the files for the whole recording are. And it could be a hundred files. And you have to tell Nuendo where that folder is. So um, let's say uh, that's, I go to, I actually have my source files here. You have to know where they are for sure. You tell the path where to go 
and you open it. And it will analyze that there's 38 different audio files and they have been analyzed. So now you can start searching. And the easiest, easiest way that I can possibly think about how to search for a, ser a scene, a particular scene to be replaced, one very easy way is the duration of a scene. Because in the field recorder, very hardly, unless it's automated, very hardly, the recordings are the same length all the time. So if you have a recording that's five minutes, three seconds, then you can search for some files that have the same duration. And that might lead you, for example, to that take. So I'm gonna do that. You can also search for scene, name, tape. I mean, there's a lot of metadata that you can search for, but let's just try the very easy one, duration. So I'm gonna go and search it. I'm gonna tell, tell Nuendo, please search in this folder, in these 38 files, which files are to be replaced with this one. Where are they? Search, and there they are. And you can preview them. So you can, you can go. I'm just gonna close the old ones so we don't get confused. Because we can in when we can have multiple projects open. So now um, okay, it's here. That's some thing about the monitors. So now um, you can go and listen to them if you want. Search the one you think is the best one. And let's say that for this one, the boom mic was the best one. Okay, and then you say I insert on lanes. Once you click there, now you will have it on the lanes, which is basically here, and you can just edit it, right? So it's very easy to replace something that was recorded outside of the studio. And in this case, there's, if, if the audio engineer is super nice and there's metadata, on the files, like the scene and all this stuff, you can just go for the scene, it's scene 32, done. But if you don't have any metadata, like in this case, and there's no much reference, duration will do the trick. And then you can search them for the files and just, and uh, the track info is here. So I know which microphones they are. So all the metadata is there. If, I mean, Nuendo is very powerful for metadata, I must say. So that was field recorder import and now let's go to the very exciting very exciting part and this is the fourth and last feature and that's immersive audio immersive sound this is a super hot topic right now everybody is trying to uh, in the music business is a very very hot topic but before that it has been there have been three major industries that have been pushing the immersive sound field further and further and that's films for sure with Dolby Atmos for example where you have speakers even on the, on the ceiling. Game audio, because you have head tracking and you can have immersive audio and ambisonics also. And then virtual reality, you can also have uh, some binaural mix of an immersive mix and you can listen to the sounds changing accordingly. So these industries are really pushing the immersive audio field further and further and really, um, because it, they kind of, let's say there's more eco economics into them than with music. But now music is starting to get supported in Atmos, in, in the 3D realm by the providers, the streaming providers. So everybody is contacting us to know how can I mix my sound to be an Atmos music? So how can I take my stereo mix and just make an Atmos out of it? And that is super trendy now. It's crazy the amount of emails I've been receiving and the amount of requests. So all this, there's, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna explain it first and then we'll go in, in practice as always. So object-based audio, you probably have heard of that. It, they share, so let's say you have a room like this and you can place objects anywhere. I'm actually in this room where it's virtual, of course. I really hope I was there. <laughs> but let's say you can pan things on the top or to the side, so you have a lot of speakers and, and you, so you, you need a special tool for this. Right? So it's not only exciting to be surrounded, but surrounded by speakers. It doesn't only look great, but there's 
more to it that why it is so good and so um, impressive and also so such a hot topic right now. The immersive audio is can be interactive with the user. So if in the near future, there's going to be, let's say, um, a provider who, if you have an Atmos set up at your home, like a home Atmos from Yamaha, for example, there's solutions for home, like an Atmos solution for home from Yamaha, for example, there it exists, you can have it and you don't have to put um, ceiling speakers. They basically reflect, they have some speakers that reflect the sound of the ceiling. So you don't have to be screwing speakers on your ceiling, luckily. And that can be interactive. So you can just, for example, um, put the language that you want it to be and just change the language, for example. Um, it's personalized to each user. So each user ha can customize the, the setup. And one of the main things is that it doesn't depend on the speaker setup. What I mean by this is, if you have a speaker setup like this, showing the picture, great. It will sound very immersive. Then if you go to a 5.1, let's say, then it will be rendered to fit that 5.1. And if you go stereo, it will be rendered to be stereo file. So it's a file that is a data file that gets rendered every time. So every time you go and see a Dolby Atmos movie, I hope you had the chance to see a, uh, move, go to a movie theater where there's ceiling speakers or something like this, like a higher surround than 7.1. Then, I mean, now this is getting into the hands. This used to be a dream years ago, and now it's innuendo, which is great. This is getting into us. We can use these tools right now. So it gets rendered every every time it's played. If you are in that room, you don't realize it because you're there with the ceiling speakers and maybe there's four ceiling speakers and the Dolby Atmos movie plays there. But then if you are in another place with 24 ceiling speakers, then it will be rendered to match those ones. So I will go there with the example of Dolby Atmos because now Dolby Atmos is very prominent, both in music and in films. This is a Adobe Atmos theater. So you can see there are ceiling speakers and those speakers, you can have a helicopter flying around your head, for example. It's, it can be way more immersive than a stereo mix. And I will give you an overview about uh, what Adobe Atmos is so that you can understand where it comes from. And um, most people know 5.1 surround. It's very, it was huge for so many years. So let's say you have Let's start with this. You have 5.1 surround, so it's more than stereo. It's like the basic surround that used to be great some years ago. <laughs> so if you have a 5.1 and you add two speakers on the rear, then that's a 7.1. That's even more immersive. You can have like a bike coming from your back, for example, and then going to the, center, to the, to the front, for example. So far, all that is to the audio because it's Y and X. And if you put the ceiling speaker, then it's 3D audio because you have the height. So that's why some people call it 3D audio because now it's really three-dimensional. You, you can pan things around. So Dolby Atmos is based, it's core, let's say the minimum setup, the minimum you can, have for a mix, it's a 7.1 surround, which we talk about, which is actually 5.1 with two reader speakers. And they put two ceiling speakers. That's the minimum. And this is called the Atmos bed, which is a 9.1 surround sound. So we went from 5.1 to 9.1, and we have two ceiling speakers. This is the minimum. And then, you can have, apart from the so-called Atmos bed, which you can think about it as the core of the mix. So the main mix where most of the music, most of the dialogue, everything is there in very present. And then you have the so-called objects. So you can place different parts of the project around these objects. So if you have a room with 100 speakers, it will 
be adapted to that room. As I said before, if you have a room with just, I don't know, 24 speakers, it will be adapted to that. So that's the basics. And of course we have a panel for this. So you need a panel that go up, no? special panel. If you are into, into another DLO, you probably will have to pay for it. This is all included in Nuendo. And you need a renderer. We also have the renderer inside Nuendo. So every time it's been rendered, every time it will adapt to the speaker setup. Okay, that's the, the, the theory behind Adobe Atmos. So let's go to the fun part. <laughs> let's go to the project. So um, first of all, I want to explain, as I said before, before we go to project, I want to tell you that it sounds so complex. Like how can this happen with just one file? And it's really just one file. So if you are working your project, everything gets routed through the renderer. And I will do that in a minute, right now in a project. And then you get one little file and that file is called ADM. So that's audio definition model. The ADM file is an open source, which is great. So now you can, it's no longer part, of, it can be outside of the Dolby world, let's call it. So how is this made in Wendo? Because I know it seems like a little bit of too much information maybe, but you'll see that in practice, it's actually kind of straightforward. It's just a new workflow that's been um, changing every day, I must say. So this is completely um, on the making as we speak. Okay, so let's say I have a project. And um, in this case, I have, it, it looks like I have like a few tracks, but it's not the case. It's all into folders because we have folder tracks and I, actually love the folder tracks because you can edit everything inside the folder with just that little folder track. So there's plenty of channels, but all of them, my dialogue, my ADR, my folding, my sound, all of that is routed to just one main group. And these are recommendation. So you take all your projects and instead of routing it to the stereo out, for example, or your interface straight or the control rule straight, you route it to a group. So that I call that group main bed because that's going to be my Atmos bed, what we called before, the core mix. So it's not going to be the, the objects flying around. Okay, so far so good. I have, this is just a project. Uh, it's a stereo project. And it goes to, uh, I have my outputs here. So I'm going to remove everything just so we start blank. And you can see, uh, so I'm, I'm basically, I already had in the project some bosses. So that's basically outputs. And let's just, just for, let's just say that we're coming from a stereo bus. So it's easier to visualize. Okay, so let's say this, this was a stereo mix and I want to make it an Atmos mix. So first thing I have to do, I have to open a 714 bus. Why 714? That's the Atmos bed. So that's the standard for, for, for the monitoring. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna add an output, but you, might, you will notice there's so many outputs we support. There's even 22.2 if you want. But in this case, I'll go to Atmos, which is 714 as we speak. This probably would change sometimes. So now I have another output. I still have like a speaker thing in my stereo. And that's why, that, that's because you can have several bosses and you can bust th things around in Wendo. It's very flexible. In this case, because I want this to be my main mix, I will, you know, I just first open the 714, which is the, my Atmos bed. And then I say, I want to set this as my main mix. So the stereo output will no longer be my main mix. When I do this, you will see that the logics of the control room will change. It will open, so I'll, I'll say set 714 as the main mix, and now 714 is here. And now the monitoring is 714. So that's the first step. You have to make a bus that is adapted to Atmos, which is 714. Okay. 
so far so good. Then um, I'm gonna go to my same one for that I just created. It's right here. And in the inserts, I'm gonna type Atmos. And then, oh, sorry, I made a mistake, Atmos, okay. And then it, the renderer just pops. So you don't have to even search for it too much. Type it, Atmos, boom, it's there. The render is there, okay. So it's ready to start receiving signals. It's getting more exciting. <laughs> so now we have to connect the project to the renderer, right? This is, um, there is a third party renderer from Dolby and we worked in conjunction with Dolby to make this one. The Nuendo renderer is actually the same as the Dolby Atmos renderer, the, the logics of it, the, lo the algorithms, even the down mixes that we have here in the renderer are from Dolby. So it's the same as the Dolby Atmos production suite, but it comes with Nuendo. And it's the only DAW that comes with something like this. So now, how can I route this? I, as most times, I go to my project window and there's one window here that says ADM authoring for Dolby Atmos. I'm gonna open that. And now there's no render connected. So if I connect the renderer, I can have the standard, if you're working with a very big production house and they have an external Dolby Atmos renderer and RMU, the real one, you can have it here connected, no problem, for sure. If you are working inside Nuendo in the box, then you select the one integrated in Nuendo, which is rendered for Dolby Atmos. And now they're connected. Okay, so now I'm ready to add my, my Atmos bed, which is the 7.1, so my main mix to the renderer. So you can see that over here, I can add beds and objects. The objects are the little speakers that you can pan things on the top and the bed is the main core mix. So I'm gonna add a bed. And because I already had it, everything going to this group, which is called main bed, I can tell Nuendo to please select my source track as the one that's called main bed. So now it's connected. So that Okay, that, uh, that reverb is actually because something I'll take it right away. Sorry about that. This is something that has to do with the direct monitoring that I'm using right now to the stream. So right now we'll, we'll see some signals going to the renderer. I'm gonna lower the volume so you can hear my voice because with Zoom sometimes if I play music and I talk at the same time, it's a disaster. <laughs> so now I can see that it's actually there. I have my 10 channels, which is the, the 9.1, and everything is going to the renderer, okay? And it's a 714 mix. And if I put the volume up, so what you, going to marry? you will see that there's a lot of channels here because it's 7.714. Okay, so far so good. So my main mix is all already there. So how about the objects? What about the mosquito that I want to fly in my head? Or the motorcycle that wants to go from one side to the other, but let's say they jumped, and or anything you want to be super immersive. So how can I do this? Okay, so let's say I want to add. Um, I'm just going to open for some files here. Oh, my computer is kind of laggy. That's because I have PowerPoint and I'm with Zoom and I have Adobe Atmos and everything is connected. <laughs> so that's why it's uh, normally it would not be so laggy. Okay, so. If I want to have some objects to fly around, and you can see I can have, so I have already 10 channels, but there's 128. So there's a lot of objects that you can add. How can I do this? Well, it's as easy as you select the tracks that you want to fly around. And then you go to the ADM window and then there's a little function, super useful, that says create objects from selected tracks. If I do that, it created objects. And now I here have a representation of the objects as they are in the project. So as they move in the project. If I open the panner, 
you will see that automatically there's a surround panel. So I can put things around and you can see it's also being represented in the Atmos render. If I go up, then it becomes bigger. If I go down, it becomes smaller. So you can have a better look at it. If you have a stereo file, you can even put things in just one, like kind of like a mono file, or even a, a, a broader file, let's say. You can have it to be an object. So it's very flexible also. It doesn't have to be a mono file, is what I'm trying to say. Even a VST instrument can be routed through a group and be an object. So for music, it's great. And then you have the down mixes here from Dolby. So you can check your mix in stereo, for example. And all this is integrated within Nuendo. So even the panner, the Dolby Atmos mix. Now, you might think, and this is going to be my last point, you might think, how can I listen to this? Because I don't have this setup here. And we do have a solution for that, which is Ambisonics. And Ambisonics is one thing that's very used very much in games. And it's, used, it's, your, it's, it's like you're in a sphere. And you're in the middle of that sphere. So you can place things around. And what Nuendo does is that it takes the Atmos mix and makes a binaural mix. So you can check on the headphones. So you can start, let's say, working on the mix in, in binaural. So a rendered binaural. You can start and it is in, all inside Nuendo. And then you can go to a facility and just check if you want. And this is also inside Nuendo. And um, if you ever wanted to try that, which I encourage you to do, because all these you can down download the demo and try it if you want. And this is going to be, um, I'm not going to go into the details of Ambisonics. I'm just going to show you how to do it. And if you have any questions, of course, just you can mail me. So I'm going to open a third order Ambisonic bus. OK? And. I'm going to make this my main mix. OK. Then the monitoring, because I'm going to go do it by binaural, I have to put my phones. I put my interface that is on my headphones. And now I can see that over here it says VST Ambi Decoder. And this is it. So this will take. The Atmos, not right now, it's not. This will take the Atmos 7.1 and it will make it into a binaural mix. And uh, basically, it will, it, you can have the, the representation of the whole thing into your headphones. So that's very handy to have over there. With that, I finish with, let's say, the theory and the practice of this presentation. And then um, it's 58 minutes, so it's just almost one hour, which was the goal. So I'm very happy that we could cover all this. I'm very happy that it's also recorded. So you can go through this uh, if you wish. And if you have any questions now, of course, feel free. If you have any questions in the future that comes to your mind, please co contact your local Yamaha person and, and uh, they can contact me no problem because I know this is kind of um, it's kind of hard to understand at first, but hopefully with this webinar you have a better understanding of how this works. And um, please just try it. There's plenty of tutorials also in the internet for this. Thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Aldo. There is a very interesting sharing by Mr. Aldo. And if you miss any things that miss any point for Mr. Aldo, don't worry. This is a recorded. Uh, web webinar we will upload to our Yamaha music YouTube channel and if you have any question regarding to purchase this software or any technical issue you are face you can email us here in widec Malaysia at music.yamaha.com all right any more question before we end this session from anyone If you are okay, just give a give us a thumbs up in the chat box so that we know all of you are okay, still still surviving there. <laughs> Hopefully. All right, thank you. In the future, if you have uh, any other curiosities about Nuendo, mixing or anything, 
just contact me. I'm happy to share all this knowledge. And uh, there's so much more. So thank you so much for your time. And thank you for so much for organizing this webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And also, you can follow our uh, Yamaha Audio uh, Facebook channel page in the Facebook so that any info, like the next webinar session, you can just get all info from there. All right. We come to the end of today's webinar. Thank you, Mr. Aldo. He's uh, sharing all the way from German right now. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And stay safe, everyone. Thank All right. You. See you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.